Hey gang, it's Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we did a bunch, gang, didn't we? You saw us attach these rafters. Are these joists? What are they? Is that a rafter because it's sloped or is that a joist because it's hanging up the ceiling? Anyway, we hung all those. We fixed the one that split. And then I got on this side. And remember, this wall used to go all the way across. So this top plate, which I, which I cut, used to go all the way to the other wall. And then there was blocking on top of it to hang the ceiling in the foyer. So I got rid of all that and I put up this joist on top of the wall. Then I got the wall plumb and I fastened the wall to the joist. But then I noticed that the wall was kind of hinging and that's exactly what it was doing right here. They basically built this little one foot wall on top of the eight foot wall. So I put a continuous two by four on the end to secure it all together and it's much better. And in addition to that rafter, we put up all the rest. So they're permanently secured over here. They're nailed over there. And if you look past the joists up into the attic space, you'll see the braces that we use to transfer the roof load to our new beam. We actually had one more brace to put in, but we left it out to make room for our ladder. And I wanted to go over one of the details in it with you. So this is the end that supports the roof. And this is the end that goes on our beam. It's called a bird's mouth. Now, when we did the first one, we noticed that it split right here. And that's normal because the beam is acting like a wedge and it's forcing this apart. Now, the reason I cut that bird's mouth, I mean, I was up there working by myself and Jordan was on the ground as my cut man. I could put this on the beam and lock it in place and then I could worry about the top. Once I got the top secured, I could put the bottom where I wanted and nailed that. But we did notice that it would split here. So I just put two nails in and that worked great on all the rest of the braces. So this brace right here is our last one and it goes up between these two joists. And those two are actually just pinned in place with one screw. That way I can take those out and put our ladder back up here for attic access. Once we're all done with the ladder, we'll pull it down, put up this brace, secure those two joists, we're ready for drywall. And I can already see it right now. Standing back here, I can see the drywall up there with a nice rough texture. Can't wait to put that on there for you guys. I know how much you love me spraying texture on drywall. Honestly, I think we're gonna go smooth this time, right, Jordan? I think so. All right. And then we're gonna have a beautiful crown wrapping around this wall, all around this area. We were already talking about our halo lighting last night, what we're gonna do for lighting. But for right now, we're done the major framing in this area of the house. So we're gonna head over here today and start doing some more demo. Let's check it out. All right, today's project, we're gonna tackle this corner. What's going on in this corner? A lot. First thing, we're gonna have a pantry coming off of our stud pack right here, turning right by this door. We love our walk-in pantries in the south. You gotta have one. It's actually gonna go through this wall. This wall's going away. When we come over here, we've got this broom closet back here. It's taking up a lot of room, a lot of wasted space back here too. The pantry will probably come back this far and some kind of cabinet right here. The other thing going on is these two doors that drive me crazy. I mean, look how nutty that is. So how are we gonna fix that? This is gonna become a pocket door and it's gonna go into the wall right here. The pantry is also gonna have a pocket door going that way. You know how much I love pocket doors and what's better than one pocket door than two. And what's better than two pocket doors? Two pocket doors that intersect. So that's gonna be really fun. So let's take down these old cabinets, all this drywall, get this framing exposed so we can see what we're up against.
All right, demo is done right here. And look at all this space we have. Right here be the corner of our new pantry. And that leaves us plenty of room in the breakfast area for a nice table with chairs here. Coming over here, we're gonna have our pocket door going into this wall. In the laundry area, these machines stick out pretty much. These, ma <laughs> these machines stick out a lot because of the dryer vent hose. Common problem, right? So we're gonna put a dryer box back here try to push these back about four inches. That'll make a huge difference right here when you walk in the back door. Speaking about this back door, now it opens way back here, but we wanna have some cabinets or something back here. Maybe this is a good spot for a secondary refrigerator. So what we're thinking about is making this an outswing door like they have in Florida for the hurricane and the winds. So let us know what you think about that. How would you like to come in the back and have a door that opens that way? That'd be kind of cool, I think get rid of all this inside so we have 10 feet from this wall to our new pantry wall here we have that much room to work with the pantry can be five feet deep six seven whatever we want and that's why we did the demo so we can plan this originally the door to the pantry was going to be on the end but we moved it to the side and we were going to have a 24 inch pocket door but with all this room now, we're gonna make it 28 because a two foot wide door is a little skinny. So you can open this door, you're gonna walk in, we'll have a motion sensor, turns on the light, and all that beautiful narrow shelving for all your cans and groceries on this wall and on this back wall. Right here, we'll have a plug, power station for a cordless vacuum, broom storage, something like that. Little Roomba? Yep, and then come around on this wall, it's gonna have a niche in it, but not for shampoo. Let us know what you think that niche might be for. So that's gonna be really cool to frame this up, but we have to talk with the owners and the designer about it, get our doors ordered and get this going. So our next step is to build all these walls. And right here where this pocket door bumps into the frame of this one, it's a critical dimension. We have to get all that figured out. So while the owners and the designer talk about that, we're gonna rip out this floor and that'll be tomorrow. So we'll see you then. Hey gang, it's the next afternoon. Yesterday you saw us get rid of this broom closet, this doorway, and this wall. Put that in the dumpster. We really want to get this pantry frame, but we can't frame it on top of the tile. The tile's got to go anyway, so that's today's project. Let me show you what we're going to use. You've seen us use this before. It's a pneumatic scraper. The beauty of this, you're standing up the whole time. Save your knees and save your back. It's a ps dash. 3B-5, and I got this from McMaster Car. We'll put a link below. It's about $500, but let me tell you what, sounds like a lot of money, but when you save your back and save your knees, and you can scrape up a whole floor like this standing up, it's well worth the money. And it's gonna do a great job. We've already kind of tested it. You can see right here, we've already scraped up this section. Came out beautifully, but sometimes this doesn't do the job. In that bathroom we just did, we had to go rent a big Bosch chipping hammer to get the tile up. It all depends on how well the tile was installed. Comes down to installation. So we know that's gonna work. We've got a sheet of plastic hanging here and you see how it's billowing in towards me. So we have negative pressure in our work area. So dust isn't gonna migrate to the rest of the house. We've got a box fan set up in the window. The back door open for cross ventilation. We'll cover all the uh, appliances and counters behind you with drop cloths. And it's just running off our DeWalt compressor. You want to go check it out? Yeah, let's go. All right. This was actually a gift from Jordan. Yeah, I saw this guy on sale. I was at Lowe's one day. I don't know what I was picking up. Something weird, like a key or something like that. And um, I saw this guy on sale, and Dad's had that old compressor that you've seen him use for a long time. Lug around. Yeah, we always have had to lug that thing around. I mean, even I mean, how long have you had that thing? 20 years. So that means that I've also been lugging it around for that long too. So I was sick of it. So yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, we got a new one and it's got wheels. Yep. So it's a D55154. It keeps up. What we do is we get about half a trash can full of tile. We clean up and go dump it. And in the meantime, the compressor can catch up and cool off. So let's get back in there and get that tile up.
slow, it's gonna be 10 more. Oh, I'm sorry. If I catch you reading YouTube comments again, it's gonna be 20 next time. Okay, I won't read them anymore. Alrighty gang, we got that tile up. It was a hot day today. So glad we wore our short sleeve shirts, yeah, stud man. pack yeah. shirt. How was it working in this thing? Oh, it kept me so cool. <laughs> Studpack.com, get your own. And we got something coming soon, don't we? We sure do. All right. And we wore our shorts today. Cause when you tear out your floors in a demo, that's probably gonna be one of the hardest days for you. Whether it's tile or wood or even carpet can be a pain. But we got it done, that tool did great. And on the trash can, we did like, what? quarter third full at a time yeah because we wanted yeah. one person ripping and one person dumping yep but tile is very heavy so and we, we we filled that trash can probably a third yep. so each of us could solo dump it in the dumpster yeah and we alternated right yep and then we also alternated with the push-ups we've got to stay fit yep just in case the floors weren't hard enough you made me do push-ups too so right now we are ready to frame this pantry right here we don't have any treated lumber for the sill plates. And remember, we're gonna use all our lumber that we use for our temporary walls for our pantry walls. So I'm gonna to head to the store in the morning, get our treated lumber, and we're gonna get this pantry built. So we'll see you tomorrow. Alrighty gang, it's the next day. You saw us use that pneumatic scraper and get this floor perfectly clean. That was some hard work moving that tile, Jordan, wasn't it? It was. So our next step is we're gonna frame this pantry. So come on down here, let me show you what we did. This is a 90 degree laser that we use to lay out this corner for the wall. But you can use a framing square like that. And we made sure that this beam was parallel to this wall and that this beam just kissed the edge of this one and that established our corner right here. Again, a framing square and a chalk line do the same thing for you. But before we did all that, we wanted to maximize the width of this pantry. But we also wanted to make sure this new pocket door lined up perfectly with this exterior door. So we didn't want to come in this exterior door and then go Shit. this way or that yeah. way, right? So we got that established on the floor. And let me show you up here on the wall. I actually have a picture of it. So imagine this is the pocket door closing against the pantry wall. And this is our bumper jam, a piece of three quarter inch stock that the pocket door bumps into when it's closed. We're going to put a rabbit on the back side of that bumper jam, tuck our drywall in there, and that's going to be a nice clean look when you're walking by here. No casing or anything. That door will just close against the bumper jam. So we had this point established because it's the same as this edge of the door. Came in three quarters of an inch to account for our three quarter inch bumper jam. That gave us this line right here for the outside wall of our pantry, which is this chalk line. We popped both chalk lines and we stood back and looked at it. And this corner kind of stood out at both of us that's kind of being boxy. And Jordan said, why don't we just clip that corner and move the wall back? Can you see what we did here on the floor like this? So imagine that's our wall. Yeah, because this used to be open right here. This right. was a big open space. There was a little desk here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna kind of feel a little weird to not have that open space. So right, you're gonna be walking this way or that way and you're gonna have a hard turn here. Yeah, hard. it's gonna be like a blind corner. Right, so just by cutting that a little bit, I think that's gonna help. How much are we cutting it by? Like probably half a foot? You know what? I actually just used my, my speed square and that's how much I cut it by. So what is that, six inches? That's six inches, yeah, right? Yeah, half a foot. Yep. I think that's gonna make a big difference. All right. It's subtle, but it'll be, it'll be cool, I think. Yep, and I think you know that angle is gonna pick up on the angles up here and we'll probably have something on the end of the peninsula. So try to tie it all together. Cool, man. Why don't we go outside and cut these sill plates and lay them out and see how it looks.
love those things. Alrighty guys, you saw that we screwed these three pieces together through the miter. That just made it all one unit. So then we could fasten the whole thing to the floor with just three of our fasteners. We love those things. I'll show you one up close. So the end is split. So you're driving that through a quarter inch hole and that's what gives you your grip. A nice countersink top. And we did seven on the whole thing. So once we got this one down and established this edge of our pocket door rough opening, we came to our pocket door formula for the width of a rough opening for a pocket door. It is two times the width of the door plus one and three quarter. We have a 28 inch door, 28 and 28, plus an inch and three quarter. That's for our finished trim around the edges. Gives us 57 and three quarter. So that gives us 36 inches clear from this corner of the pantry to here. So this door opens all the way, just in case we don't change this door to an outswing. Then we put in our last sill plate. So that's done. It really gives us a sense of how big this pantry will be. And it, it really is. There's yeah. a lot of room in here. You could lay down in there. You could. So it's going to be awesome. Shelves here, here, and even on this wall. We'll be able to have food for a year in there. So now we're going to cut out the ceiling basically in this shape for our top plates. We're going to project this profile up there with our laser and cut that out. So let's get it done. Alrighty guys, that went quick. I got up in the attic, I swept all the insulation back on this side, Jordan cut the drywall, I stepped on it, brought it down. Yeah, we were doing it at the same time. Yeah. It was pretty we're optimized. Together, yeah. yeah. And then every house has at least one switch that doesn't do anything, right? Well, in this house, it was this one, and it's just a switch leg abandoned in the attic. So who knows what that was for, but that goes away. Anyway, now we are ready to put up our top plates. So we used our laser and came off a quarter inch on the outside of our framing. And that was our cut line up here. That quarter inch is gonna give us room for our top plates. And then when we put our sheetrock on the wall, that wall sheetrock is gonna support the ceiling like it should. So we're gonna put up our long piece here first. It is 83 and an eighth to the long point. So we're gonna go out and cut it, put it up because we need to know where our ladder blocking goes. We're gonna explain that to you here in just a minute. But first, let's go outside and cut this piece and install it. Right, cool that's our last nail into our ladder blocking so this is ladder blocking it looks like rungs on the side of a ladder right and it gives us a place to nail our top plates into because we didn't have anything before so we got this side done cut to length and then I had to actually go up in the attic move the insulation and nail from the other side because I can't nail from right here from underneath so that's all secure we got the other side done, looks great, super strong, and then check it out. We even threw some studs up because we couldn't wait to see what it was going to look like, especially with that beveled corner. That was certainly the right call to do. And this is just temporary, got a lot more framing to do, but this gives you a sense of what that pantry is going to look like. Owners absolutely love it. When you come in here, again, you're going to have all this shelving. The items are going to be one item deep. Their old pantry was like two feet deep. So everything was like way in the back. Everybody's got a pantry like that. 
but this is going to be incredible and we can't wait to get our pocket door kit in install it we're going to show you how to do that but for now go get yourself a pre-expanded anchor and drive it into that like button for us ask us a question drop us a comment subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you guys on the next one